Let's create this really simple logo animation in Blender. We'll be using a text to do this, but you could use any SVG logo as well if you please to do so. So let's figure out how we can create it. In our default scene, we'll select the default cube and tap X to delete it. Then we'll press Shift A and search for a text object and then press Tab to go into edit mode and type in whatever text you want. So in this case, I'm just going to say tech because it's a techie effect. Then I'll press Tab to go back into object mode and I'll go to the text properties over here. There, I'll expand the font and select the font by pressing this button to whatever font I feel suits. Then this is going to act as our base object, but we require two other variations of this. So we press Shift D, enter, and Shift D, enter. Now, for the second object that's created over here, we actually want to extrude it a bit. So we expand this geometry and increase this extrude value to maybe 0.05, after which we'll just press G, Z, and move it by that distance. So press 0.05, and that way it just comes to the top of the previous text that you had created. And now we're actually going to use this offset to shrink it by a bit. So we'll take this offset and give it a negative value to make it smaller. So maybe a negative 0.02 will be good enough. Next, we'll take the third text object and extrude it by slightly more than what you extruded the first one. So in this case, I'll go with the value of 0.06 and then I'll press GZ and bring it up by that distance. So 0.06. Now I'll just select everything and press GZ 0.1 so that it doesn't rest completely on the floor and it's got some distance from the floor plane that we're about to add. And then I'll select our original text object and give this also some thickness. So let's go to the geometry properties over here and just extrude it by a small amount. So let's say maybe 0.02, then GZ minus 0.02 to bring it below the original text object. And then I want this to be even larger than the top that I created. So I'll increase the offset to a positive value and maybe I'll go with a value of a positive 0.02. So now you have three text objects. One is going to be acting as our base. One is going to act as our cap. And we have one more that should be present in the center. If you move the top one to the top, you should be able to see our second or the middle layer of text. So once you're set with all of this, you can press Shift A and search for a mesh plane to act as our floor. So this you can just press S100 to make it nice and big. Now we can move on to the materials for each of these objects. For that, we'll first switch our viewport shading to rendered so that we can see the changes that we make. And we'll go to the world properties and change the background color all the way to black or something just above black. So we'll make it a value of 0.01. After that, we'll select the default light and we'll just move it to the back. So we'll press GY and bring it somewhere far behind like that and just play around with it till you're happy with the direction of the shadows and things like that. So I think I'll go with around that. So I've moved it a bit to the X axis as well. And that way I get these shadows. Next for the floor plane, we'll go to the material properties, press this plus button to add in a new material call it floor and we'll just increase the metallic all the way to one and reduce the roughness to 0.3. Now we don't see nice reflections. So we go to our render properties, switch on bloom and screen space reflections. And now you can see how nicely the text reflects upon this plane. Then we'll select our base text object, go to the material properties, add in a new material, call this base text, and then go ahead and reduce the base color to a very dark color and reduce the roughness as well, all the way to zero. Apart from that, I also want these edges to not be so sharp for this base text. So so I'll go back to the text properties and under the bevel tab present under geometry, I'll just increase the depth to 0.01 and that will just give them a nice round edge, which might look good. But because of that rounding, the height also increases by a bit. So if you see a depth of zero versus a depth of 0.01, the actual height is increasing as well. So it's going to be intersecting with our second and third text objects. So we can select it and just press GZ to bring it down by just a little bit. If you want to be precise with it, press one to go into your front view and just bring it till the base of the previous text object. Next, we can select our third text object, which is on top and just press GZ to bring it up by a bit and then play around with the second text object. So let's select it, go to the material properties, add in a new material, call this tech text, and then bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows click and drag to create a new window and change this from the 3D viewport to the shader editor. Here, we're going to zoom in, select the principal PSDF and tap X to delete it. Then I'll press shift A and search for two nodes. The first one being an emission node and the second one being a transparent BSDF. So then let's select it and bring it in here and mix these two together using a mix shader. So press shift A and search for a mix shader and connect the emission to the first shader, transparent to the second shader and the shader into the surface of the material output. Now we need to tell 
this material, which areas have to be emitted and which ones have to be transparent. So we press shift A and search for a Voronoi texture and change this from Euclidean to Chebyshev. Then I can take this Voronoi texture and press shift D to duplicate it and plug the distance into the vector and take this distance and plug it into the factor. Now to get some more control, I'll press shift A and search for a color ramp node and plug that in right after the second Voronoi texture. Now we can start bringing the white slider in to start getting some of the transparent BSDF to show. And you can see that the size is a bit too large. So I'm going to change the scale on the second Voronoi texture down to one and I'll increase the scale on the first one up to maybe a value of 50. So just feel free to play around with these values till you get what you like. And always remember that you can just play around with this particular slider to bring things in. Now to animate it, you could switch this to 4D and play around with the W slider. But the thing about Voronoi is that this W slider is not a smooth motion. So if you move this even by a tiny bit, you're just going to jump to the next shape and there's not going to be a transition between between them. So to create a smooth transition, instead of changing this to 4D, we'll keep this at 3D and between these two Voronoi textures, we'll add in a wave texture. Then for the scale of the wave texture, we have to reduce it down to something really small. So let's go with 0.1 and then we can play around with the phase offset and that'll create this really nice smooth animation. Now again, you can play around with the scale and everything just to get something that suits your requirements. And once you're happy with it, you'll realize that the black areas are not actually transparent, but they're solid. So to fix that, we have to go to the material properties over here, go down to the settings and change the blend mode from opaque to alpha hashed. Now, if you're using alpha hashed, there might be a lot of noise created. So to fix those noise issues, you might have to increase the sample count in your render. But if you don't want that, you can actually switch from alpha hashed to alpha clip. But that way you have to make sure that these values become greater than 0.5 because only then will they actually appear. So you have to bring this black slider in quite a bit and that way you get what you might have wanted. So once you play around with these, you should be having really nice reflections as well. And if you're not on alpha clip or alpha hashed, such as alpha blend, you would not have these nice reflections. So that's why we're going to be going with alpha clip. And this is essentially the sci-fi material for the inner text. We have to change the color. So I'll go ahead and take this emission color and just give it a bluish color. So let's just bring that up. And I think that looks good enough. But to give it a nice bloom, I'll increase the strength to something like five. Next, we'll play around with the material for the top text. So I'll press this plus button to add in a new material, call this top text. And it's going to be fairly simple. We'll have it metallic. And for the roughness, we'll press shift and search for noise texture and we'll search for a color ramp. Then we can plug the color into the factor of the color ramp and take this color and plug it into the roughness. Next on the noise texture, I'll decrease the scale to something like one and I'll increase the detail and increase the roughness. Then I'll bring the black slider in by a bit and bring the white slider in by a bit. And that way I just get this really nice texture on the text that I really like. But the problem is that it's stretched out on the top surface and it's not stretched on these side surfaces. So to make sure that they're either stretched on all the axes correctly or they're not stretched on any of the sides with the node wrangler enabled, I'll select this node and press control T and switch from generated to object. And once you do that, you should have no stretching on any of these sides and that looks good enough for what I was trying to go for. Next, I'll just add in my camera and finish off the final setup for the scene before I do the animation. So let's select the camera, press Alt G to clear location, Alt R to clear rotation, and then press G Z to bring it up on the Z axis and then press R X 90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. Then press zero to go into your camera view and press G Y and just bring it back Then press G Z R Z and just stay around with the positioning till you're happy with what you want. You can press Rx twice to move it on the local x-axis and just move it around to the appropriate position. Once you have it set at somewhere that you like, you can make final changes to the materials in case you don't like what you see. I think I want there to be a nice gradient on this plane. For that, I'm going to select the light and press zero on my numpad to go out and see where it's present. And then I can try different things such as increasing the radius and seeing if the radius actually does appear onto that region, but it doesn't. So now I can press G GY and bring it closer. And now if I press zero, the gradient does start appearing on the floor. I don't want to be distracted by anything outside the camera view. So I'll select my camera, go to the viewport display and increase passport out all the way to one. That looks better. Next with the light, I'll give this also a very slightly bluish hue or I'll select the plane and give the plane a slightly bluish hue. Now you can always play around with the light. For example, right now, because my radius is so high, you don't get really nice sharp edges 
for these regions. So it's up to you as to which aspect you prefer to give importance to. So I think I'm going to reduce the world color to black as well and keep the camera position at something like this. I might play around with the lighting just a little bit before the final render, such as duplicating the light to get some more shadows included to enhance the E as you can see. But yeah, I think just duplicating the light did the trick. So once you're happy with that, you can start off the animation. So let's set our animation defaults by going to the output properties, changing the aspect ratio to 4K and then changing the frame rate to 60 frames per second. I'll change the end frame to 300 so that it's a five second long animation. Output folder, I can change it to wherever I want to store it. File format, I'm going to choose FFmpeg video. Encoding, I'm going to change the container from Matroska to MPEG4 and output quality, I'm going to keep it at perceptually lossless. Then I'll expand the timeline by a little bit. Press the back arrow to go to frame zero. Select the top text and then I'll press I location. Then on frame 15, I'll press I location after which I'll give it one second to go down. The so one second is 60 frames. So I'll go to frame 15 plus 60, which is 75. So then I will press G Z and bring it down till the middle text is completely covered. So just about there is fine. And then I'll press I location. And I think I want it to actually take half a second before it starts moving. So let's select these and just move it by another 15 seconds. And then I want this to repeat. So I'll expand the timeline a little bit, go back to frame zero, and then I'll go ahead and place the keyframes. So on frame 30, which is after half a second, I want this inner text to start appearing. So I'll actually select my outer text and press G Z and bring it down till all of it is covered and then press I location on frame 30. And then it should take one second to rise up. So one second is 60 frames. So I have to go to frame 90 and press G Z and bring it up to some amount. So I think this is fine. I'll press I location. Then I want to repeat the action to bring it down. So I want it to remain up for however long necessary and then come back down. So I know that it has to come down 30 frames before the end. So I'll just take this keyframe, press shift D and to bring it to 270. After which I know it should take another 60 frames for it to go down. So I need to go to frame 210 and place this keyframe. So let's select this, press shift D and bring it to 210. So that way we should get a nice animation where it goes up, stays up, and then it goes back down nice and smoothly. Then again, on frame 30, it smoothly rises back up. Now I can animate this inner text. So let's go to the wave texture, go all the way to the face offset. And I don't need it to be looping or anything. So I'll just add in the driver by pressing hash frame so that it takes the frame number and that'll make it way too fast. So I'll divide it by some number like 200 and then I'll play the animation and see how fast it's moving. And to get a realistic idea of the speed of the motion, you can change the playback from play every frame to frame dropping and just see whether it's moving too fast or it's moving fast enough and accordingly change the divided by value on the face offset. So if you're happy with the way things are looking, you can go ahead and press render animation. I really hope that was a simple one that allowed you to get an idea of some techniques that you can implement in really creative ways. Of course, as I mentioned before, you can use logos as well or any SVG and get similar results. The next video is also going to be a logo animation. And if you're into animating logos for clients or even for yourself, definitely check out my logo animation playlist that I'll be creating today and adding in all of the previous logo animations that I've created as well. So until you check those out, thank you so much for watching. Keep creating and stay creative.